Okay, today I'm going to show you how to do lesson one and lesson two of BricsCAD. So the first thing you need to do is open up BricsCAD. Okay, this is really important. So we're going to start in 2D drafting. Make sure your units are metric. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a line. Go over here, just click somewhere, and you can probably see there's little numbers there it's saying 693. That's how long the line is. Now what we're going to do, and you see how it's drawing at an angle, we want a line that's actually square. So we go down to this thing here and click ortho, and now it only draws lines at 90 degree angles. So I want my line to be 50 long, so I just typed on the numpad 50. It's really small, so I probably want to zoom in a bit. I'm using the mouse wheel for that. 50, 50, and 50. And now I'm pressing escape. Okay, so now I've drawn a box. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fillet the edge of the box. This here is the fillet command. Okay, so you see down here, it says the radius of the fillet. So you know the radius is half of a circle. So the first one you do is we type R, press enter, and what is the fillet radius? Well, let's just use 10. All right, now it says select first entity. See that? So that's this one. Select second entity. You see it's actually fitted to that for us. It's made a nice, nice fillet, which is great. So now we've used fillet. Let's use chamfer. This one here is chamfer, chamfer. Now it asks for distance one and distance two. So chamfer is going to cut a thing off the edge. So we could cut more of this one and less of this one, or more of this one and less of this one. And depending on you know what we want, or we could just make it the same. So you can just use the defaults, which are going to be really small, which won't work, or we want to actually do it. There's other settings here, angle, method, trim, hollow, different ones. We'll just try distance, D for distance. And let's just say we want it to be 25 and for the second entity, 10. So you click the first entity and the second entity. See what it did? It sort of sliced the edge off there for us. Okay, so now we've used fillet and we've actually used chamfer, which are two really important tools. Okay, now we're going to use the join command. So the first thing you do is you select everything. And there's a little button here. It's called join. Join and then just press enter. See it says six entities joined into one polyline. So it made everything one thing. Oh, that's great. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a hole in the bottom, or just a circle in the bottom corner here. So, but the thing is we want it in a specific distance away from the edge. So we could just draw a circle somewhere, but it's just in a random place and we want it in a specific place. So we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna select it, delete it. So I'm gonna use the offset command Okay, so you select the the item, and there's an offset command here somewhere. Where is it? I know all the keyboard shortcuts, but we'll use the offset. Well, I don't know what the where, the, where it is on here, so I'm just going to type it in. Okay, so it did an offset, but um, we don't actually know how long that offset was. So I'm going to select that, delete. Alright, so how far do we want it to offset? So let's just say we wanted a hole that was 5 millimeters up and 5 millimeters away. Okay, so we just type 5, and click, click to select the entity, and then the side you want, and it's done it. So that's 5, and that's 5. That's great. So now we have a position there. So let's draw our circle. So I'm clicking up here, the circle, click our point, and um, this is asking for the radius of the circle. So let's say I want the hole to be four millimeters wide, so let's say two millimeter radius. Now I've got my hole. So I don't really need that anymore, so I can just delete it. It's great. Okay, so now let's put some text um, on, our, on our little key ring hole that we're making. Text, I want the text to be here, and um, now it's saying, you know, 
what um, text do I want? So I'm just going to put um, hello there. Wow, but my text is really big. I just zoomed out using the mouse wheel. It's way too big. Okay, so I want something smaller. So I click my text and I go over here on the right hand side and I can change the height down to 10. Well, 10 is probably still too big. Let's change it to 5. That's great. So that's actually fitting nicely on our um, on our spot. Now that's all fine, but we can't actually convert that to 3D. So we're going to click the text and move over to the little square on the corner. Right click that and explode the text. Okay, so sort of the black disappeared. Okay. Now there were lots of other options with the text. We could have changed the font. We could have made it capitals. But now we can't edit it now that we've exploded it. Okay. She might say, okay, great, so I've got this thing, now what I want to do? So now I'm going to show you how to draw the flower, which we did. Okay, so we're going to put the flower in a random spot. I'll click here. Let's say I want it to be five. That's the center. And um, I use the oval. I drew a line first. Let's click the center, and let's say 10. Okay, and now I'm going to draw the oval, the ellipse. I think it's called this ellipse. So I click there, click there, and see how you can make it wider or skinnier. This is kind of a little bit of an artistic thing, depending on what you want. So that was three clicks. Okay, great. So we've got our one. So we want it to be arrayed all the way around, okay, like we did. So what we do is, the first thing we do is we go over here, there's a little button that says 2D Array. You click that, and there's different, two different kinds of arrays. There's a rectangular array, or there's a polar array. So we want a polar array because it's going around in a circle. Okay, so we select entities. That's our entity. Press enter. And it's asking for the center. So we click the center. So the center is the center of our circle. Okay, that's great. Now it says angle to fill between number of items. So let's just say we want eight items. It works out the angle between them. Okay, we can change the different options here. You can experiment them if you like. So see that's arrayed that all the way around to make the petals on our flower. Okay, so that's fine. So we've got our flower on there. So but the problem is we've got all this stuff in the mid middle, middle, which we don't really want. We just want the petals on the outside. So I'm going to use the trim command. That button there does trim. Select the outside. Press enter. And then um, we just select all the middle ones and they all just disappear. That's great. So we probably don't want that line there either. So now we have a nice flower on our um, keyring. So we did it one way. Let's do it another way. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to move it using the move command. Select the base point. Enter base points. That's the base point there. And oh, look at that. It's only going 90 degrees. So um, I want to turn ortho off. So there's two ways to do this. You can actually little press this little guy down here. Or you can actually press F8. I use F8 because I use CAD all the time, but you can do it however you like. So we move that down there. Um, so now we're going to do a different kind of polar array. Okay. So select our circle. Let's put a little, let's make it 2 mil this time. And we're going to do a different kind of petal instead of an ellipse. So, oh, but look, it's going at all different angles. We don't really want that. We want ortho to be on, so it's going it up. So we turn ortho back on, and let's say 5. Okay, escape. So we've got our little line there now. So now we're going to draw a spline. So that there is spline. So we click our endpoint. Oh, but no, look, we can't really draw it freehand, so we want to turn ortho off. You see, you turn ortho on and off a lot. So we did this to draw the little, little snowflake some of you drew. And um, I just press enter, 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 and it's done. That's great. So I've got this weird little sort of shape. Looks a bit, looks a bit strange. That's okay though. It's 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 fine. But the thing is, we want like a, a petal that's, you know, it's a mirror image for our for our um, snowflake. So how we do that is we select what we want and we click this one here, which is 2D mirror. And it says, where's the start of the mirror line? So that's the start of the mirror line, and that's the end. And it says, delete the original entity, yes or no? Well, we don't want to do that, so we press N. 
and see it mirrored exactly what we just did which is you know helpful for us okay so you know we don't really need that line anymore so now we have this weird little sort of thing we need to make it one thing because currently it's two things you see that's one thing and that's another thing but we want it to be one thing instead of two separate lines so we select both and we go over here and there's one called join join and we just press enter because we already joined so now it's one thing great so you probably remember how to do the 2d array so you click 2d array select the entity that's our entity enter um, then it wants you to select the center that's the center and then how many do we want let's just say we want four let's say we want six Ooh, that didn't work out that well for us. It didn't go all the way around. Let's try again. So we change our angle to fill to 360. And it's going to calculate that one. Yeah, that's much better. Click that one. Enter. Select the center. Enter. Press OK. And now it's made our snowflake, which looks kind of cool. All right, well, that's good. Um, so, you know, we could have, we could trim the outside of that snowflake now, just like we did before. So using the same trim command. So uh, where's that trim command? Trim, trim, trim. There it is there. Select the outer one, press enter, select the inner ones, gone. It's all nicely trimmed. Excellent. So now we have a 2D thing. Okay, so that's the end of the 2D tutorial. So I'm going to do another one for 3D. Okay, thanks guys.